It's June 2022. A YouTube video I just posted blew up and took me from 30 subscribers to 40,000. I was about to receive my first ever Google AdSense payment and it was going to be the first money I've ever made online and it was going to be over a thousand dollars. I felt like I was on top of the world. But this feeling was going to end soon. My channel was an entertainment channel about game development and the last video I made that blew up my channel was a crap low effort game that I made whilst getting to distracted by Doug DeMuro car reviews every five minutes. This next one I was making was going to be way better than the one that blew my channel up. I literally learned to code multiplayer for it. If you know coding, you know how difficult that is. I staged this entire challenge where I got five of my subscribers to fight against this massive boss version of me that I made. I put quite literally five times the effort into that video. It took me almost a month and a half to make. So naturally, I had some expectations about how it would do. The previous one got a million views in a month. So I thought, I'll dampen my expectations a bit. I'll be happy with 500,000. On upload day, I was buzzing to show all of my new subscribers this awesome, cool thing that I made. So I hit the upload button and I went to bed. The next morning, I wake up excited, burst out of bed. And the first thing I do is load up my laptop to check the comments and the views. And when the page loads up, my excited expression very quickly fades away. Because the video didn't get 500,000 views, it didn't get 50,000 views, it didn't even get 5,000. I woke up the next morning to 800 views. I click on the comments. The previous evening I was expecting hundreds, but there was four. Three of them unintelligible comments left by kids, and the only one that made sense said the following. It's been so long since they uploaded that when I got the notification, I thought I subscribed to someone on accident. And it had two likes. I think I disliked it as well out of my frustration at the time. I even refreshed the page a couple times. I didn't want to believe what I was seeing. Surely those 800 views were just from the first 20, 30 minutes, right? But I kept refreshing the page and seeing the same number over and over again. And in fact, during that entire next month, the video only just scraped 5,000 views and this absolutely crushed me. I was so confused. I thought I was basically back to square one that YouTube decided that it hated my channel for some reason, but I didn't understand how growth on social media worked. I was still trying to play by the rules of stage one, but I didn't realize I was now in stage two where the stuff you have to do is completely different. In this video, I will explain to you these three stages and I'm gonna refer to YouTube a lot, but I'm pretty sure it could apply to any social media, but YouTube's my main one, so I'm gonna to refer to that. Before we start, my name is Brian. A couple of years ago, I managed to escape the nine to five rat race life, and my mission is to help you do the same thing. I want to help you live a life that you actually control, where you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. And if you resonate with that, Welcome, you are like us. Everyone on this channel is building this better life for ourselves, so consider clicking the subscribe button. Stage one, we will call the egg. You've just made your YouTube channel, you're just starting out, and you don't really know the rules of the game. You don't even know what makes a YouTube video good yet, so you basically just develop your skills on camera, learn what makes a good thumbnail, how to actually keep people engaged in your video. You're probably switching between topics a lot, and you're basically getting your noob gains at the gym. Here is where you make the most rapid progress that you're ever gonna make in your YouTube career. This stage lasted six months for me. I was absolutely obsessed with learning how to do well on YouTube. So I escaped this stage quite easily, but there was one problem because all the advice that I was following and the advice people were posting at the time was the conventional Mr. Beast style YouTube advice. This took me from making talking head camera videos about how to lose weight whilst eating fast food to loud, shouty, over-edited videos, like really hype videos that didn't have a clip on the screen for longer than like four or five seconds. Deadass, go check my other channel. You will it's so rare that there's a clip on there for longer than five seconds. You don't actually need to make these super hype, loud, colorful, over-edited videos to blow up. You can, for example, get good at storytelling to keep people engaged. There's not just one way to make a good video. 
But nonetheless, that's what I did. I eventually, in my improvement, hit the critical point that I talk about in my videos a lot, where you've improved so much that it's unreasonable you're not going to get views. So my channel blew up. Once you hit that critical point in your improvement, you will get a viral video. And if you haven't got your viral video yet, it's because you still need to keep improving and iterating on your content. And by the way, what constitutes viral depends on the niche. So I would say 50,000 views on a channel like this is pretty damn good, but on my other entertainment channel, it would be more like 500,000. So once you get that video, you are done with stage one. And every YouTuber that I watched at the time explains how to get to this stage really well. But after that, there wasn't really any advice on how to go further, how to actually carry on this success. So that would have left you on your own, confused about why you can't replicate that success until now. Stage two, I'm going to call the hatchling because now you're in the real world, you're in the YouTube space, you have an audience, but you still have no fucking idea what's going on. You're basically like bouncing around walls, falling over. There's no specific subscriber count for getting to this stage. It might be a thousand, it might be a hundred thousand if you've got a really viral video. It just depends on the niche as well, but you will be able to tell. You're probably going to post the next few videos with some expectation. You know, you don't expect it to do as well as the one that blew up, but you expect more views than usual. But then you end up barely getting any more views than you did before. So it leaves you confused. And it's because in stage two, YouTube has now given you a hat to wear. For better or for worse, you are at the mercy of that hat because every video that you post now has to go through that audience first. It could be the most amazing video ever, 10 times better than in the last video, but if your current audience doesn't like it, it doesn't matter. That video might have even blew up before you managed to get your audience. But the rules for you now are completely different because what makes a conventionally good thumbnail might not even apply to you anymore because you need to learn how to make a thumbnail and title that your current audience will click on and a video that your current audience will watch then YouTube is going to push it out further. You can actually see this with the view counts on my first channel. After that first video blew up, I was flailing my arms around, posting a bunch of random stuff that I thought was going to do well, and then it didn't, over and over again. And as you can see, I actually had a video in the middle of all that flailing around that did quite well. And when you look closer at the click-through rate of that video, you find that it didn't do as well with my initial audience. It had an eight and a half click-through rate in the first 24 hours, but it must have been good enough to still get pushed out further. And you see that over the next week, the click-through rate actually goes up because YouTube finds a better audience for that video. So that's why that random anomaly video blew up. All those other videos died at 5,000 views in the first month. And they have got views since because other videos of mine have gone viral. People have clicked on my channel and watched them. But after that really viral anomaly video, Video, I basically went back to flailing my arms around and I finally found the hat that YouTube wanted me to wear six months later. And that hat for me was Tower Defense Games because every video I posted after that got at least 100,000 views in a month. After you get your hat, you have to experiment with different angles, different thumbnail styles, different video styles, and you basically just have to look for this hat. What made that initial video do so well? Because after you find that hat, the type of video that clicks with your audience, you're going to get consistently good views and your videos are gonna be so much more likely to get pushed out again. This is why it's so important to not just chase random viral videos because you need to optimize to get the hat that you want from the start. If you get a hat you don't want, you're going to basically have to start from scratch and try and get another viral video in the topic that you actually want to make videos about. You escape this stage because your average view count is a lot higher than when you were first looking for your hat and now your videos are actually getting pushed out to the algorithm again. And actually this is where most YouTubers stop because this is enough to get a full-time income get some respectable money coming in and get millions of subscribers, but there's still another stage. Stage three is their fully grown hen. You kind of know what's going on now. You have a respectable size audience. You're probably easily making a full-time income by now, but there's still one problem, which is that you're kind of niched down. At this stage, you can start curating your audience a little bit. So you still make the videos that kind of fit your hat, but now in the videos, you can start slowly introducing other topics. You could tell stories about your life, make your audience relate to you. Maybe slowly every now and again, posting a video that you know won't do that well in the algorithm, but you know your audience will love. And what this does 
is it builds you a loyal audience. It builds you an audience of people that watch videos because you made them, not because it helps them with a specific topic. And this is the longest stage. It can take quite a long time to get here, but the perfect example of this type of YouTuber is PewDiePie. PewDiePie literally posts videos on whatever the fuck he wants. And no matter what he posts, it gets at least a million and a half views. People don't watch it for what's in the video, they watch it because PewDiePie made it. And this life is not unreachable for you. Don't think of it like some massive mountain that you have to climb. Just take it step by step. Go through each stage one by one. Don't make it blend into this massive insurmountable task. Hopefully this video gives you a bit of clarity about what you should be focusing on. And remember, you're not going to have to get all the way to stage three to go full time. You can basically go full time from the end of stage one. I started as literally the most painfully average twat you could imagine. And I managed to go full time within six months. And I literally made videos on things that I didn't know anything about. People just enjoy watching your journey. So even if you don't have anything to make videos about, document your journey. You don't need any special qualities, no specific personality traits. Just keep getting better day by day. And one day, your time will come. And after that, your life will never be the same again. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.